All right, guys, I've got a lot of questions still on my pricing, so I'm going to take y'all through how I actually invoice my jobs. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a job in Jobber, and then we're going to invoice it. And then I have two other jobs that I've already created that I'm going to take you through the invoicing process on those. And each of these three jobs is going to cover one of three different strategies that I use for my pricing. So the first thing we're going to do is come up here to the top left and click, uh, you can't see that. Let me move myself over. There we go. So let's go home. How about that? Go to the home screen, very top, create job. Client name, you already got your clients in here. Choose Fancy Nancy. We'll choose one of her properties. That looks like a good one there. Uh, I always highlight and copy and paste the address into the title bar because this is going to carry forward through as we invoice. Um, and this one's going to be a loose towel bar. Come over here to the work order number. A lot of times you can have work order numbers to put in. Property manager is going to be Nancy. Tenant contact, let's say it's Amy at 520-887-8887. Bill to Nancy LLC. I'm making a lot of this up. It's the invoicing and the job part that I want you to see. We'll make it, we'll schedule it for today and we'll schedule it for two. PM. There we go. Assign it to myself. Come down here to the labor bar or the line items bar. I'm probably moving too fast for y'all. So you come down here to line items. And what I'm going to do here on the line item is I'm actually going to say original. Oh my goodness, I can't type. Original request. And then the description, it's going to be Tenant reported loose towel bar in master bathroom. Uh, please repair or replace as necessary. Do not exceed $350 or provide estimate. This is a very common way that they would word this because there's a $350 limit. If it's over that, then I have to submit an, an estimate. So this job is all created. Come down here to the bottom, click save job. That's how you create that job. I just wanted to show you all that real quick. Now we're going to get into the invoicing. So come down here to jobs and open up your jobs. And then, of course, this is a demo account that I've done a lot of example stuff on. So we're going to ignore all of this. We can do two things here. We can filter it. Actually, we can do a few things. We can filter it to show active today. And now that's just going to show the three jobs that I want to focus on today. Let's click on jobs again, take us back into that screen. Or you can come over here and you can click today. Or you can click on scheduled action required or late. You can look at all the different types that you have. Another thing you can do, and I'll bring this back up just to show you that it's all under jobs. Another thing you can do is this was Ranchette's Drive. So let's type Ran. And then these are all going to be the Ranchette's Drives. It just recognized it's filtering as we're typing. Here's today's right here. So any of those methods will take you to this job. We've got the title up here. Everything's all filled out. I, this original request. Oh, that's not the right one. Haha. <laughs> Jobs. 12340 Ranchettes Drive. 12340. There's all our Ranchettes Drive jobs. Oh, so maybe we weren't. So let's just go to Jobs. Filter for today. Because I have two that. Nope. Ranchettes. Loose Towel Bore. Oh, I chose Alexis Cord. I thought I chose Ranchettes Drive. That was the issue. So you bring up your jobs. You filter it down. You open up the job. Once you've got the job opened up, you'll see right here I said original request. I copy and paste this from the actual original request so that later on down the line there's no question as to whether I did specifically what they asked or not because I have the original request copied and pasted here. So if they intended to mean something else that they didn't type, I can just show that that's not what they asked for. 
Next, new line item. So this is a towel bar. I could do two things here. Sometimes I'll just type out the word or just choose this, you know, labor. And then I'll just backspace out of that whole hourly description and I'll type my own description of what I did here. That's the first thing I can do. And then I would come over here and price it at 125 because this is such a quick, easy job. It's going to be what I call a trip fee job. So that's number one. That's out of the three different strategies. One strategy is the trip fee method, and that's just I charge $125 minimum for any job. So these quick, easy ones like loose towel bars, they're all going to be 125 Now there is something different I can do. Let's delete this. Click on new line item again. And instead, let's go to, let's type in towel, and it's going to auto-populate my custom line item, which y'all can request with a link down below in the description. Y'all can bring in, you can import my custom line item. So you're going to click on the link, you're going to go through the process, get my CSV file, and go to your custom line items and upload my CSV file, and all of mine will be populated into your account if you want to use mine. But don't use them the way they are, guys. Like, look at what you do and how you do it and what you charge and edit all of them to match your business. But it's a good starting point. But anyways, I typed in towel. It brought up immediately this one. However, this $35 price, this is actually $45 now. And more than that, uh, this so this this price here, this line item, this custom line item, this is what I use for move-outs when I'm adding an additional item to a move-out. So I've charged a separate trip fee on a move-out, and now I'm adding individual line items. We're not doing that here. This is a one-off that was just the towel bar. So the description is the same, and I just leave that the same. I don't really edit it unless I need to leave some kind of note. Let's get rid of this unit cost. I actually need to delete that completely out of there. I don't know why the cost got in here. Unit price, we'll just take care of that too and come over here total and say $125. So that's the labor, that's the trip fee, that's strategy number one, save. Now let's click on another line item, type in towel again. And so the service is the labor, that was the 35 that I changed to 125 to cover my trip fee. And then we're going to go to product, and I also have a line item for materials for that because I use toggle bolts. And in fact, I need to update this one too because I'm actually charging $2 for the toggle bolts now instead of $1. So I need to go edit that in my custom line items, but for now I'll just do it on the spot. Click save. So now it's added up the total to $127. The original request is still in here. Now, there's two ways to close this job out so you can invoice it. The first way is to click on this under Visits. This is going to show each appointment that you scheduled at this property, and you can click Mark Complete. I'm not going to do that on this one, but that's one of the ways you can close this out. Or up at the top, you can click More Actions, Close Job, and then it's going to give you a choice. Do you want to complete the visit, the appointment that you set in here, or do you want to remove the visit? I'm going to say Complete the Visit because I went to the job, I did the work, Click close job. Now this job is closed out and we can come up here and click generate invoice. And before we go into there, I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to copy anyways, that whole title there. Click on next step. Replace this. I just like to have this because it's going to take whatever's in here. That's going to become the subject line of the email that it sends. So I want them to receive the email and know right off the bat what the address was and what the job was. And if they ever need to search for this later in their email, they can just go type in 6487 or they can type in Alexis. They can type in anything from here and search their email to try to find this invoice if they needed to. Next thing, I check everything over here. Um, Ask client for review. This is actually really cool. This is a new feature that I'm not using yet, but this is very interesting. So ask client for review. This is a new feature jobber just now added. I don't have it fully set up yet, but if you say yes and you get it all set up, when you close this job out and invoice, it's going to ask them to go to Google and leave a good review for you. It's, it's a whole customizable system to increase the number of good reviews for you on Google. Now, I'm going to say no because I don't have it all set up yet. Uh, work order numbers there, property managers there, tenant contact info, bill two, that all looks good. 
All of this still looks good. It's all still the same. I don't need to add any line items. There's the price. You can add a discount if you need to. You can add tax if you need to. If there's a deposit that you got, you can add that deposit in there. So I'm going to come down here. Now I can either save this invoice or if I'm ready to go ahead and send it, then I click save and send as email. You can also send as a text message and it works the same way. It'll come up on their mobile as a text. They can click on it, open it up, click on pay now. They can pay you securely online right away. You can get same day payment from Jobber if you want to. But I'm going to say send as email because all my client info is already in here. It knows Nancy's email address. So I check all of this, just make sure I'm happy with it. You can also customize what this is going to say every time. And then if you want, you can click on invoice. You can also add attachments. So had I taken a picture on the job and saved it to this job within the Jobber app, that would be here as an option for me to go ahead and attach that picture to this email. But I didn't do that when we built this job just now, as you saw. And we click on send email. And now we've invoiced. So strategy number one is the trip fee. Tiny jobs that don't take you very long. You drive over there, you knock it out in less than 30 minutes. You invoice $125 for it for the uh, labor plus whatever you did in materials. This job is done. This job is closed out. If they pay, there's you can go in here to annotate the payment collected as well, but that's not what this video is about. So let's go back to jobs again. Now we're going to go to the second invoicing method that I use. So let's open up Ranchette's Drive Punch List. This is the one I thought I was looking for before. I built this earlier. This is a very common job. We've got all the info here. We've got all the info here. Got my original request. So now I'm going to say new line item. And here's what we're going to do. This one, because it's a punch list, is not likely to be as cheap as 125 labor. Right? So I'm going to type labor here. Because I'm not going to use my custom line items for the labor part because those custom line items, as I said, the reason they exist is to add them to existing work orders where I've already covered my trip fee. So for labor, let's see, uh, toilet and guest bathroom runs when not in use. So I'm going to say replaced. Replaced fill valve on toilet and guest bathroom and... Uh, Tested functions good. All right. Let's even say no longer running. However you want to word it. Put what you want to put in there. And then in the same labor line, I'm also going to say Troubleshot outlet in office and found loose wire on hot terminal. Resecured wire and tested outlet. Outlet functions as intended. Next, smoke detector in the hallway is beeping. So, so now I've just uh, replaced battery on smoke detector in hallway. So now I've just gone through here and I've just typed out a basic description of the work I did. I do recommend you be more descriptive than this, but I don't want to waste your time on a video just typing in lots of descriptions. Let's say I was at this job. Let's say all of this work altogether took me an hour and a half plus 20 minutes of drive time. So we're looking at close to two hours. I like to make a minimum of $100 an hour. So this is at my discretion here. What we're doing when I invoice this I can't go over 350 because that's just how it works. I can't go over 350, but I can charge basically what I want. And my incentive to not charge too much is if I charge too much, they'll stop sending me work. So I'm fair with them. So let's say I, I like to make $100 an hour. This was an easy job. Didn't have to go to Home Depot or anything. So I'm going to charge $200 for the labor and hit save. But we need to cover our materials as well. So when we go to cover our materials, it looks like we need a fill valve and a 9-volt battery. So let's go to new line item, fill. There's materials, comma, toilet, comma, fill valve, one new toilet fill valve. 
auto populate that i charge 24 dollars for it it looks like i probably need to bump that up to like 26 or 28 save all right next line item was a nine volt battery so let's type in 9v again these are my custom line items y'all can import this into your jobber account you can download my csv file put it on your computer and upload it into your jobber and all this will be in your jobber. It looks like I'm currently charging $5 per nine volt battery, which is about the right price. It used to be four and that just barely covered the cost of the batteries. So to make it safer, I bumped it up to five quantity one. Uh, if it was, you know, quantity five, then it adjusts the total at the end there. But this one was quantity one. Click save. So now what I have here is I have my original request with a $0 price. I have my labor for $200. I've accounted for the materials I use, $229. Again, let's go this way actually this time. So this time, instead of coming up to more actions and close job, instead of that, we'll close it out over here and we'll click on visits, mark complete, close job. And then we'll come over here to generate invoice. If you want, you can highlight this now or you can highlight it after you click on that. But generate invoice. There's the one we want to choose. I think I told you before, if there were other closed out jobs, you'd have a list of them to pick from here for which one it is that you're invoicing. Next step. And then up in this invoice subject line, we're going to paste in that address with a description of what the job was. This one was punch list. I'm going to say no for the client reviews, but I am going to get that set up soon and start getting a lot of Google reviews going on. Original request, labor, there's the materials. You can add a discount, add tax, or add a deposit if you want. We don't need to in this case. We're going to save and send as email. We've got that address and everything up here in the subject line. We've got Mr. Billy Bob's email address here. Again, you can customize all this. And for this one, as an example, I did go ahead and attach some pictures to this job. So you can see once you get to this point, you can attach the PDF. You can attach the pictures that you connected to this job when you took them while you were on the job site. If you want, you can send yourself a copy. I don't know why you want to, but you can send yourself a copy of this. To me, it just clutters up my email. And then send email. So that's strategy two. So strategy one was just a trip fee. Far more than $100 an hour because it's a trip fee and it only took 10-15 minutes to do the job. Strategy two is kind of like hourly. It's, it's invoice what you feel is fair to invoice while making sure you're not invoicing for less than $100 an hour. I could have got away with $250, especially with that outlet, honestly. If I did troubleshoot an electrical problem and I saved them from having to send an electrician out there, then in that scenario, I probably would have actually invoiced like 180 for that or a 280 or something to that effect. I would have invoiced a lot more for troubleshooting electrical. But that's the second one is sort of coming up with your own price. I base it on not making less than 100 an hour, but also charging a premium for different types of things that I charge premiums for. So this is all done and wrapped up. Invoice sent to client. Now let's invoice the third time. We'll go back to jobs here, just come over to today and click on that. And here's a move out. These are my favorites. I love move outs. So we've got the original request, pop-up stopper and master bathroom doesn't work, replace blinds and bedroom, replace doorknob and deadbolt, check smoke detectors, clean dryer vent, replace burnt out bulbs throughout. This is the fun one, guys. So new line item, I'm going to type in move. That's going to give me trip fee comma, move out. And then it's got a description. This line item covers the trip fee for a move out and includes the following. Admin receiving, assigning parts, ordering, invoicing, also includes drive time, inspecting and measuring, trips for acquiring materials, and general cleanup and waste disposal. So everything that is not <coughs> billable time spent with a tool in your hand is what this $125 move out trip fee costs. Go ahead and click save. <coughs> Now, if there are any notes that I want the property manager to know, I'm going to add a line item that says notes. However, I'm not going to be adding that because I don't need to. 
there are no notes for this job. So the first thing we did was a pop-up stopper in the master bathroom. Let's go to new line item, type pop, labor, pop-up, repair or replace. Repair, replace the components required. Repair, replacement of the components required to repair a non-functioning or missing pop-up stopper in the bathroom sink. Looks like that's $50. I'm actually charging more for that now too as well, but that was my price when I made this. Quantity one, save. Next, we're gonna do the materials for that pop-up stopper. So again, let's just type pop. Here's materials, pop-up drain kit. This is kind of made up. This is, there are actual kits that you can buy for this. They are in the ballpark of $26. I don't buy a kit for every job. This just makes it easy to standardize the pricing and not spend a whole lot of time worrying about the pricing. Quantities auto-filled is one. So we're going to go ahead and hit save on that. Now the pop-up's done. What was the next job? Replace blinds in bedroom at end of hallway over, over sink and kitchen. That should have said and over the sink in the kitchen. So that's two sets of blinds. Let's come down here to new line item. Type in mini. These are always mini blinds. I do $25 each for them. I still do $25 each for them. This was quantity two. So we go ahead and adjust that quantity to reflect that we did two of them. Also, here's a good reason to keep this original request up here. If I didn't have the original request specifying where those blinds get changed, then in here I would have to manually type in where I changed those blinds out, what rooms I changed them in. But because that's already covered up here, I can just do my autofill thing and move on. Next, new line item. I think I might have had, let's see. No, I do not have. There was a time when I was experimenting with charging the same price for all the mini blinds up to like 50 inches or something. It looks like I took that out, which was a good idea. But anyways, let's go materials. And then down here we'll say two sets of mini blinds. And we're going to say quantity is going to be, well, no, let's pretend like they're different prices. So we'll say quantity is just one. We're, we're just not calling it a quantity. We've said two down here. And the total cost of those two blinds combined together, let's say, was $54. If you want, you can type into here and say, this set costs this much and that set costs that much. They don't really need or want you to do that. There's the total for the materials, $54 for two sets of mini blinds, just the cheap vinyl ones. New line item, uh, what was next? Replace doorknob and deadbolt on front door and key to match existing. So we've got our new line item right here. So let's say, see what happens when I type in door. Door stop, doorknob, here we go. Labor, doorknob or deadbolt, repair or replace each. Standardized pricing. There was a total of two. There was one doorknob and one deadbolt. So that gives me the labor for replacing those. I think I'm still at about that rate as well. Go ahead and click save and then new line item again, door. Scroll down to the bottom is where your products rather than your labor is going to be. And we have materials, doorknob. See, I have materials, doorknob, interior pass through, materials, doorknob, interior bed and bath, materials, doorknob, heat entry. That's the exterior doorknob that we did there. We did one doorknob. Save. New line item. Dead. Product. Materials. Deadbolt. Single cylinder. Materials. Doorknob. Keyed entry. There we go. $34. Quantity one. That all looks like it's still about right. We'll go ahead and save that. So now we've got the doorknob and deadbolt replace labor and we've got individually the materials for each of those. I could just combine those, I suppose, since they're both set at $34. But what's next? Check smoke detectors and replace batteries or replace smoke detectors if expired. So let's have some fun with this. Let's say new line item, smoke labor, smoke detector, hardwired, replace or install. I'm definitely charging more for these now. I think it's more like 15. I may have it set in my other account at like 13 or 14 or something.
But let's say we're doing $15 each. So let's say that we found two expired smoke detectors. So we're going to put quantity two there for $15 each, $30 labor. Now we need to account, and notice this is hardwired. I also have battery operated as separate line items. Now we'll do for materials, type in smoke, and we'll go down here. Materials, smoke detector, hardwired, yes. That's the one. Quantity two, save. So we replaced two of them, and the other three needed 9-volt batteries. So let's go to type in bat. Labor, smoke detector. Here we go. Labor, smoke detector, battery change. $5 each for labor for changing those batteries. I could probably take that to 6 maybe $7 now. Go ahead and click save. Oh, that wasn't the right quantity, so let's open that back up. Quantity, uh, three of them we changed the batteries on. Click save. Next, new line item. And let's say 9V. And there's going to be materials. Here we go, product, materials, battery, 9 volt. So we're going to click on that. And again, we did three of those. $12 in materials for that. Click save. Back up to the top. Clean dryer vent. So, new line item, uh, say vent, labor, dryer vent cleaning. I have two different line items for this. One is for if we're just cleaning the vent, not the ducting, but just the vent itself. So the back of the dryer, the flexible hose that goes to the wall, and the spot on the wall. So we'll do that. We'll call that $15. That's good to go. Save. And last but not least... Replace burned out bulbs throughout. So, new line item. Bulb. Bulb. There we go. So, I have labor, light bulb, replace standard each, and labor, light bulb, replace specialty each. Specialty bulbs cost more. They range in price quite dramatically, but I'm just going to do... Um, Light bulb replace standard each. Let's say I had to replace a dozen of them. $48 for the labor to replace those light bulbs, which accounts for a half hour of work, which is probably less than what you'll spend replacing those light bulbs. And then new line item. Again, let's type bulb. And now we go to products to cover our materials. Is materials, light bulb, standard each, $5.00. That seems a little high, but this also covers much more expensive bulbs that don't fall under specialty for me, but they average at $5 each across the board over the course of a month. They all pay for themselves. Uh, we did quantity 12, so there's 12. Go ahead and click save. So now we're up to $637 for this entire thing. If y'all are curious about this column here, this 355 that's cost. So if you have specific costs that you incur, like say your light bulbs, you, you pay a dollar each form or whatever. If you just want to track cost versus what you're charging because you do markups, that's what you can use this for here. Even for labor, you can do that. I did not intend when I built this to have these numbers in the cost section. I think I was just playing around with it again because this is a demo account. But anyways, that's what that is. But the total over here now comes up to 637. This is like a half day job right here. This this is all, it's not even a half day. This is a three hour job at most, including going to Home Depot if you need to, which I probably wouldn't need to for this job because I would have all of this in the van with me already. $637. So this priced itself. I didn't have to do anything had there been a line item in here that wasn't one of my default like pre-made line items that y'all can get from me, then I would have just typed that out and assigned a price to it. But everything on this one was. It adds it all up for you. And basically what we're doing for this third strategy is we're charging this trip fee for the move out. And I have an identical one basically that just doesn't say move out. It just says trip fee. And it says basically the same thing that it covers all of this stuff. And then all of these, I just price individually for the job. This is all assuming I'm on the job. If they call me and they say, hey, Ray, let's, in fact, let's do another one. Let's say I got a phone call 
or I noticed something and I was like, Hey, you're missing five door stoppers. And they said, Oh man, yeah, we, we need that to happen. Actually. I didn't notice that. Go ahead and add those five door stoppers. So I'm going to come over here and say stopper and, Oh, probably just, Oh, I bet I typed it as door stop all one word. Here we go. Labor door stop install $8 quantity five. And then I'm going to come over here and document guys, document everything in parentheses, property manager approved five new door stoppers over the phone. There we go. I would type something a little more than that. And I would also ask that property manager to please text me that request so that I have it documented. Uh, but now we've got the five new door stoppers and the labor for those hit save new line item doorstop materials doorstop I charge five dollars each no matter what type it is there was quantity five boom save now the jobs up to seven hundred and two dollars so I showed you this before we'll just go up here this time more actions close job complete one past visit close job Let's go ahead and highlight this title while we're in this page. Oops, I don't even need to go to more actions. Generate invoice. Next step. Oops, there we go. Paste. Now we have the title on here. Ask client for review. No, because I don't have that set up, but I'm excited to get it set up. I'll do a whole video with y'all on how to set this up too for the reviews. Everything's all good. $702. No discounts, no taxes, no deposit. We're going to save and send as email. There we go. It's got, look, I got it's bigger on the inside at gmail.com. That's all customizable. All the pictures that we took while we were on the job, we can go ahead and attach to this right here. Let's say for whatever reason we want to attach a PDF of this invoice, we'll go ahead and do that send email and now this job's been invoiced so those are my three strategy guys these i hope this makes it clear there there are other ways to do this there are other strategies there are one-off very large like facial replacement jobs where i'm just going to type in a description of what i'm going to do all sorts of different strategies but these are my three main ones trip fee for the simple easy jobs Pick my own price, but make sure I'm thorough with my communications and fair with my pricing and don't fall under $100 an hour for labor. Charge the materials, just whatever they were. And then the third item, the third strategy is going to be, as we just finished here, the move out where I've got a separate trip fee that just covers everything that's not on the job. And then I've got my line items all the way down covering each item that we did. These have all been invoiced. So this is how this works. I hope that clears a lot up for y'all. Please do feel free to comment any other questions that you have. I'll try to get them answered. But with that being said, I'm going to let y'all go for now. I love you guys. I hope you're out there killing it. And I'll talk to y'all later.